For as long as there's been disease, there's been man's effort to get relief. For prehistoric man, illness was a punishment of the gods. His only hope for cure was appeasing the heavens. In ancient times, science began to catch up when wise men discovered balms and curatives extracted from natural products like plants. By the end of the 20th century, molecular chemistry had joined the fight against disease and intricate knowledge about compounds led to new drugs. In the new millennium, science is stronger than ever. Today, fields like advanced computing and informatics have become new age weapons against disease. There's one more weapon that's gaining ground, the globally connected collective. How can this virtually networked community of scientists be driven to fight disease together? That's a question of science. A tiny tablet, a humble bottle of tonic, a vial of life-saving medication. These are the elixirs of modern-day healthcare. Each of these simple-looking drugs holds within them a complex chemistry. They're the result of years and even decades of scientific research, and they're innovations that cost thousands of crores of rupees to reach us. The business of drug discovery is a mammoth enterprise that's conducted mostly by big pharmaceutical companies. Today, these handful corporations are responsible for nearly every medicine in the market. But running a profitable business doesn't always make for profitable healthcare. While some diseases draw a lot of attention from drug discoverers, there are others that fall under the radar. Diseases like tuberculosis or TB, one of India's biggest killers. Every year, nearly 20 lakh new patients are afflicted by it. Many developing drug-sensitive or drug-resistant TB where the disease doesn't respond to any known drug. It would seem obvious that TB would be at the forefront of drug discovery research. Sadly, as more than one researcher found out, that's not the case. I realized when we discovered some ta new targets, we patented them, uh, I went from door to door to big pharma companies and nobody was interested. Everybody was interested in getting a cancer marker and such a marker that which will keep patients coming back. I realized that although thousand people die per day in tuberculosis in India, which may be as large as in cancer, but there's no hope for big companies to take up projects to do that. For nearly a decade, noted genomics and systems biology expert, Professor Samir Brahmachari has been on a mission to shake the status quo and offer the world a new model for how medicines are made. It's an out-of-the-box idea that hopes to revamp drug discovery in the information age. In 2008, a small team of like-minded people launched the Open Source Drug Discovery Program under the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, or CSIR. OSDD CSIR shifts attention away from the big pharmaceutical companies. Instead, the job of drug discovery is given to a global community of scientists, researchers, students, academic institutions, and biotech companies. It's the world's first comprehensive crowdsourcing project with drug discovery as its goal. So the idea was, can we not put all heads together, make the discovery, and make it generic? Day zero, even a new drug becomes generic, then India is the champion. We will give to the people of India the lowest cost. OSDD CSIR's flagship project, Connect to Decode, takes on TB. It's an undertaking that's massive both in scope and scale. Like any drug discovery process, it's a long road with key milestones. Studying the TB pathogen, MTB, to identify its weaknesses. 
finding chemical compounds which can attack these weaknesses. Screening the compounds for efficacy against TB and toxicity, etc. Conducting clinical trials and introducing them into the Indian market. Connect to Decode began with studying the MTB genome in great detail. In phase 1, it took on the task of annotating the genome of TB's pathogen, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. What exactly was this job? The genome of any living organism, in this case Mycobacterium tuberculosis or MTB, is like a map that tells us all about it. Annotating the genome means figuring out this map with all its details. But how does knowing this map help drug discovery? It helps scientists identify any weak or vulnerable spots in MTB. These spots or targets are chemical molecules made of proteins. If scientists know the target, then they can create inhibitors or other chemical molecules that disable target proteins. It's these inhibitors that can be developed into new drugs. Although MTB's genome had been sequenced in 1998, it had only been partially annotated. That means, of its 4,000 genes, nearly 1,000 had not been studied in detail. OSDD-CSIR would change all that. By 2010, Connect to Decode's Phase 1 released the first results of reannotation. It presented remarkable results. 40 new drug targets, giving drug discoverers 40 new possibilities to make TB drugs. These 40 targets were found by a group of over 100 researchers and students, scattered all over India and abroad using crowdsourcing and open source. And it would be crowdsourcing and open source that would now take the targets to the next level. It was time for OSDD's Connect to Decode Phase 2. If the first phase was about finding MTB targets, the second phase was about finding their corresponding inhibitors. This wasn't just about finding a specific key for a particular lock. It was also about finding a needle in a haystack. It was time to enter the bafflingly enormous world of chemical molecules. There is a lot of information available on which compound actually kills TB and which does not. And this number rounds into a couple of billion compounds. So how do you then learn from this data set, trying to understand chemical properties that can help us segregate compounds which are active against TB versus not active against TB? How do you do that? The answer in modern day drug discovery is advanced computing. It's the most efficient solution to handling drug discoveries, huge and complex scientific tasks. Today, computers can do what no single lab or scientific group can. They can build computational models and conduct virtual experiments on millions of chemical compounds in a remarkably short time. That's because computers have the extraordinary ability to handle huge amounts of data, analyze this massive data very quickly and systematically and predict results as if the experiment had been conducted in a real lab. And so drug discovery in the 21st century involves a new field called chem informatics. Chem informatics lies at the intersection of advanced computing and chemistry and is driven by revolutions in both these areas. The first is the advent of supercomputers or computers which have unprecedented processing powers and storage capacities. The other revolution is the deciphering of atomic and crystal structures of molecules. Building computational models of these structures allows chemists to understand how molecules bind with each other. Just like a ship docks into harbour, Scientists study how one protein molecule docks itself into the other's binding cavity. You can take such a protein molecule which, uh, and you know the shape of the binding cavity 
then you can screen or you can dock into that or put into that millions of compounds theoretically uh, through the computational power and find something which actually starts to interact. You can go and synthesize the compound, you can do the experiment and you can come back and now refine it further. It's all coordinated from Bangalore's IISC or the Indian Institute of Science which is the nodal center for all OSDD chem informatics. It is precisely this computer-driven strategy that OSDD CSIR employs to design new drugs. But unlike commercial drug discovery models, which are closed, it gives this job to any qualified chemist interested to join in. Having identified MTB targets in the first phase, phase two of Connect to Decode had two critical tasks, to clone MTB targets identified in phase one and to synthesize molecules that could be potential inhibitors. Cloning MTB targets involves creating multiple copies of target proteins in their purest form so that chemists and biologists can conduct experiments on them. Synthesizing inhibitor molecules is nothing but designing and making chemical compounds. This can be done virtually on the computer as well as physically in a lab. Just like in phase one, OSDD CSIR called upon its army of researchers across the country to do the job. We went to different chemistry communities in different laboratories, IICT, NCL, CLRI, CDRI, IIIM Jammu, NIST Jorath, NIST Trivandrum and appeal to them saying, using your chemistry expertise, <coughs> can you make us different types of molecules? Top academic institutions were convinced to come on board, but OSDD CSIR didn't rely on them alone. It called upon the massive untapped potential of the online scientific community. They already had a networking portal called CISBORG, that allowed scientific collaboration on different projects. It now added another portal dedicated purely to chemistry called OSDD Chem. Uh, we were really struggling to get the entire chemist community online. You know, the simple reason is that chemists, the training is typically to have patents and to take forward compounds downstream and you need chemistry to drive a drug discovery project. That is when we actually came up with OSDD Chem where we interacted with chemist Pan India, trying to understand their needs in terms of what is the compounds that they have, have they screened it against any disease, what are the activities it is showing. OSDD Chem invites any chemist who has already made or desires to make promising molecules that could inhibit MTB targets. It actually allows you to systematically upload the structure of the chemical compound. You can upload the biological activity, you can upload all the analytical data. When it was launched, the OSDD Chem got an enthusiastic response from researchers, many of them young students. In fact, this enthusiasm almost brought the project to its knees. So when we crowdsourced this activity, a large number of people actually participated. And when they were trying to generate these models on their laptops or on their home desktops, it was really crashing down because they didn't have enough requirement to run these models. The solution for this was to get a grid to support them. We realized that CDAC has already set up the Garuda grid, which is to support the India's academic uh, community. So when we approached CDAC, CDAC was more than willing, they were very supportive. The Center for Development of Advanced Computing, or CDAC, had built the Garuda Computing Grid. It allowed researchers and synthetic chemists to tap into the incredible processing and storage power of supercomputers from the comfort of their personal workstations. Now that their computers were no longer crashing, work could begin in earnest. Just like articles on Wikipedia are openly edited, Structures of molecules introduced by one scientist began to be edited, improved upon, and developed by others. So it is just like open source software program. A molecule is free 
and it is editable by another scientist so that we will get the cumulative effect of the abilities of different scientists. OSDD is having a very good team of students and researchers. They are getting the um, scientist, scientist support, also uh, the facility support. So, it is mutually synergetic. This synergetic collaboration may be focused on finding a TB cure in the near future, but its immediate fallout is the education of future chem informaticians. So they can do it wherever they are, as long as they are trained and they understand what we are talking about. So we are generating this group of what we call as chemo informaticians. In doing so, OSDD's virtual platforms have tapped into a thus far neglected treasure trove of talent. These are scientists and students who live away from the big cities in smaller towns and remote areas. The group also includes women scientists compelled to abandon their research midstream for personal reasons. I joined OSDD. I thought this is the right place and the right time to start my work again because I am I, I have a passion for drug discovery. I am having two kids, actually one is two and a half years and one is four months. So I am working from home and uh, first I, I was really frightened that how, whether I can finish it or whether I can do it. But with the help of Dalil sir and all the students of ILC, they have made it possible. Especially now we have a result in virtual screening where, where the women sitting at home, as I said, they are working through the internet. They have developed certain uh, molecules and now it is being sent to the, uh, to the network related to our OSDD which is in Cochin University and then it is, uh, it is being for, tested for the screening there. It is, uh, next step is the synthesis of the molecule. Thanks to this online network of talented and driven researchers, OSDD has built numerous computational models for new chemical molecules. These models are remarkable because one can run a myriad of experiments before actually stepping into a chemistry lab. This predictive power drastically cuts down on resources and reduces the total time taken to identify potential drug molecules. After all, it's easier, cheaper and faster to fail in the virtual world, no matter how often, than to do so in the real world. Today, the better you are in predictive sciences, the less uh, failures you're going to have. And that's what everybody is trying. But what I'm saying is India has the strengths in terms of the knowledge base to do it. Does that mean that new drugs can be created entirely on the computer? Not quite. There are several rounds of experiments that molecules must undergo in an actual lab. And so every molecule submitted virtually to OSTD CSIR also gets physically synthesized. It is then added to an open library that any chemist can access. This repository exists at the Indian Institute of Chemical Technology or IICT in Hyderabad. IICT and OSDD share the same motto, when it comes to drug discovery, leave no molecule behind. We made a consortium of team which travels across length and breadth of the country, go to small colleges, universities who make small chemicals but they don't know what to be those chemicals. So we bring them to IICT and then screen them and if there is a nice activity against tuberculosis, we will inform the principal investigator that your compound is showing good activity. Welcome to IICT's National Molecule Bank, also known as the Mall Bank. It's home to thousands of chemical compounds that hold the potential to become TB drugs in the future. It's a state-of-the-art storage facility that can preserve molecules for up to 40 to 50 years. About 12,000 new chemicals which are stored at our place and these chemicals are currently under screening uh, with various non-pathogenic tuberculosis bacteria. Before OSDD came along, TB researchers mostly worked on chemical compounds that already existed in common knowledge. But Mall Bank's open repository changed all that. Normally for TB screening, people have been working on 
structures which are already known in literature and they wanted to do something around that structures. But what we got here in OSDD was something totally new compounds. We came to a point where 25 new chemicals which will have intellectual property also are now being taken forward. And we believe that out of these 25, at least one would become a drug of choice for tuberculosis in the near future. Once such promising molecules and compounds emerge from the chemistry lab, it's time for the ultimate test, attacking the deadly pathogen MTB. That's when biologists take over from the chemists. There are many chemists in India who are synthesizing compounds and they may not have the ability to test on the bacteria because firstly they may not have the biological expertise and secondly they may not have the facilities. So we get them tested on mycobacterium tuberculosis so that we are able to identify the drugs which can really kill the mycobacterium tuberculosis. OSDD CSIR takes on the job of biologically screening each promising compound against the TB pathogen. This happens in various stages. It starts with in vitro screening that happens in test tubes. If successful, it's followed by in vivo testing in animals. This screening not only tells scientists how effective the compound is against TB, but it also checks whether it's safe or toxic for human consumption. When we start projects under OSDD, there are many activities which need to be done as a part of the drug discovery process, which are done as standard operating protocols, which means that you take, let's say, compound A, you test it in an assay B, you provide the results, and you do this thousand times, ten thousand times. These are tasks that academic institutions are often reluctant to take on. So, in the absence of such laboratories, who could do these critical and complex tasks? That's where OSDD CSIR involved contract research organizations or CROs. So they are contract research organizations who, to whom we have transferred standard operating protocols, who provide us results on specific assays and give us the result in a database. They are not involved in any interpretation. In keeping with the crowdsourcing philosophy, OSDD CSIR has thrown open the bid to anyone from the biotechnology industry to lend a hand. This open call has attracted business organizations that are as committed to fighting TB as any non-profit one. When it comes to tuberculosis, I think fundamentally Premas has always had this need to work on something which was valuable and important to India. We were asked how we could add value. Currently, we are doing a screening of compound library uh, for all the compounds that OSDD has from its collaborators and also working in creation of uh, knock-in and knock-out strains for MTB uh, for OSDD where they'll be able to screen further targets using these strains. Other CROs have contributed by sharing their unique intellectual capital. Chemists who devote their entire time to OSDD activities. It's a give and take arrangement that benefits both CROs and OSDD CSIR. Dubrand helps in making those molecules at small scale and in the large scale. So today we are making like 50, you have seen 50 milligram or 100 milligram. So tomorrow if the molecule is active, we'll make only 10 gram or 100 gram. And even if, if we go beyond that, we can make also kilogram to 5 kilogram within Jubilant. So Jubilant will be a partner to make 50 milligram till 5 kilogram. So all the way through from the basic research till the final research. Today, OSDD CSIR has successfully proven that the open source model can unite not just scientists and academicians, but also the public and private sector. In its latest endeavor, it goes a step further by making the fight against TB a truly global collaboration. They have reached out to the US-based TB Alliance, which has been working on an exciting new drug regimen, one that takes on the challenge of MDR, or multi-drug resistant TB. They are also a non-profit organization, and we are also a non-profit organization, so they were kind of comfortable to share this particular regimen with us. So we are hoping this will replace the 
currently MPR regimen and we have got reasons to believe that if this is successful, this will reduce the duration of treatment. The regimen is a combination of new chemicals paired with established TB drugs. Already having undergone phase 1 trials in Africa, OSDD CSIR has brought it to India for the next phase. It's partnering with the National Institute for Tuberculosis and Respiratory Diseases in New Delhi, which brings nearly six decades of clinical expertise. This regimen has already undergone eight phase one clinical trial, so we are very confident about the safety. Also, in the agreement, we say that OSDD has the or the CSAR has the right to manufacture, to develop, to take to clinical trials, and if it's successful then we can take it to the market and have our own pricing for our patients in India. It's an exciting prospect for India. If all goes well, we could see a day when hospital OPDs like these will no longer be filled with TB patients. But the eventual footprint of the trials extend even beyond. Maybe in the beginning people were skeptical, now we have moved a long way now. Now that it has been laid out, now hopefully everything will function smoothly. It has demonstrated its workability on TB. There is no reason why it should not be expanded to malaria. It should be expanded to leishmania, which is essentially an Indian problem. And work on all these areas with a strong focus on research and development. In less than a decade, OSDD CSIR has proved the skeptics wrong. It has emerged as a viable alternative to the conventional model of profit-driven drug discovery. But as encouraging as its debut has been, it still has much to achieve. So what lies ahead for this open model, whose very essence is change? It will evolve. Five years from now, and I'm, I'm confident OECD will go forward and probably deliver too. But whether that model will be identical to what we started, it need not be so. And and you know, if you expect it to be so, you're actually putting restraints on that. Open source has transformed drug discovery from a commercial business to a social and emotional one. Its profits are measured not just by financial gain or personal glory, but also by greater good. As for the returns, OSDD's mentor has the final word. Infinite possibilities, you know, I can go on telling you for hours together, uh, how many hundred projects can be done um, involving crowdsourcing and uh, open source? Open source will work when best is when there is a global good.